Monday morning. Join the discussion. In California's 39th district, Democrat Gil Cisneros debated Republican Young Kim in the race to succeed Republican Congressman Ed Royce. He's retiring. The contest is considered a toss-up by the Cook Political Report. This is 25 Minutes. Hi, I'm Rick Reef, and I'm here with the candidates in California's 39th Congressional District. The district covers the north part of Orange County and spills into Los Angeles and San Bernardino counties. It includes Fullerton, Brea, Diamond Bar, more than a dozen cities in all. The area has usually gone Republican, but Hillary Clinton carried it in 2016. So here are the candidates. The Democrat, Gil Cisneros. He's a former Navy supply officer and corporate shipping manager. And since winning the Mega Millions jackpot, he's become a philanthropist. The Republican, Young Kim. She's a former state assemblywoman and a former staffer for Congressman Royce. The candidates got here by finishing one, two in a crowded and bruising primary. Now it's less crowded, but <laughs> still bruising. I want to thank both of you for agreeing to come on to this uh, to this show and agreeing to uh, a more casual uh, uh, format than what we had in our previous debate. And I think it maybe will you know we'll be able to get get into things a little more and have a have a good interchange. So, so welcome uh, to uh, to both of you. Pleasure so, to be here. And so we'll, we will start with uh, opening statements. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gil, by uh, co flip of the coin, you go first. Well, Rick, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, my life has been about service, and it starts with my family. My grandfathers were World War II veterans. My dad was a Vietnam veteran. And I joined the Navy right out of high school because I wanted to follow in their footsteps, but the Navy also gave me what I saw as an opportunity to improve my life. Um, but I was very fortunate that I met somebody who saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself yet, and he recommended that I apply for this program that would lead to a Navy scholarship. That program changed my life, and it really gave me opportunity through education that I never knew existed before. So much so that when I had that other life-changing event and I won the California Lottery, I knew the one thing that I wanted to do was to give kids that same opportunity through education that I had. So for the last eight years, my wife and I have been supporting college scholarships, college access programs. We give books to kindergartners so they can develop a love of reading. We support math education in elementary schools. It's been an incredible experience, and me and my wife both love the work that we do. And along the way, we've got more involved. We got more involved in democratic politics. And then after the November 2016 presidential election, People started to ask me and talk to me about, well, maybe you should think about running for Congress. So I sat down with my wife and we talked about a lot of the issues that are important to us, like education, health care, immigration reform, common sense gun legislation, everything that we have been fighting for, this administration and Republicans have been trying to take away. And right then and there, I knew that I needed to run for Congress because the people of the 39th haven't been represented for a long time. And I'm going to give them that representation that they deserve. OK, thank you, Gil. And you ticked off a lot of subjects <laughs> there. And hopefully, we're going to get to a few of those. <laughs> Young Rick, I do want to thank yeah. you for hosting this important uh, debate and uh, giving the uh, viewers the opportunity to listen to both Gail and I on issues that are important to the district. But I want to talk to the viewers and uh, tell you a little bit about myself. As you know, I'm an immigrant from South Korea. 43 years ago, my family immigrated to the United States. Uh, through the, you know, the regular system, many come here to realize the American dream through the opportunities that America provides. Who would have thought 40 some years later that I would be running for a seat in the United States Congress? But I didn't get here by accident. I learned from early on, having been uh, born and raised in South Korea after elementary school, my family came to live in America and I grew up on the island of Guam. And then I went to the island of Hawaii and came across the Pacific Ocean to come to uh, California. And I call that getting into the bigger world. And uh, I've had the opportunity after graduating to work in a private sector to uh, also you know start up a, a small business which is very difficult which is why I understand how difficult it is to be a small business person especially in a state of California which is already overtaxed and over regulated and then I had the opportunity to go and work for a someone who is uh, principally uh, disciplined physically conservative uh, someone who cares about the district and that's Ed Royce I started working 
working with him when he was still in the state senate. I had the opportunity to continue to work with him, uh, serve the community of the 39th congressional district that I'm now trying to uh, continue the representation that the people of the 39th district has, uh, you know, enjoyed for the last 26 years. This is a district that I know. Running for Congress is not something running for the sake of running. This is uh, personal to me. I'm running to represent not only my family, but neighbors, the community, a uh, place where I raised my four children. Uh, the issues, I happen to understand very well. This is a very diverse district. As an immigrant, someone from the different uh, background, I think I understand the important key issues like education, transportation, international relations, and I would like to be able to talk about these issues and more, and I hope people will see how different I am from my uh, opponent. Okay, Thank well, you. before we get to talk about those issues, we have to talk about the big issue, and that's Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, I, both of you are focusing your campaigns on your local ties, mm -hmm. your local involvement, but as you know, and the millions are, that are pouring in are not pouring in just to serve the 39th district, right? This is a national election. It's a referendum on Donald Trump. And so, Kim, I'll ask you first, are you running with the president or are you running away from the president? Neither. I am running on my own. I'm running to represent the 39th Congressional District. Yes, Rick, I know everybody tries to tie me to Donald Trump and the national politics. Yes, I am, when I'm elected, I would be representing 39th District in Washington, D.C. But m what's more important is what is the key issues of the district that I can take to Washington to fight on their behalf and advocate on their behalf. So I am running to represent this district as my own person with the proven independent bipartisan leadership that I have uh, proven when I served in the California State okay. Assembly. But, but as yeah. you know, in Congress, there will be votes where you have to vote one way or right. the other. So just to maybe give, give an example on each side. What is something that the president has done that you agree with and what is something he's done or is doing that you don't agree with. I, I appreciate his uh, tax policy. Look, economy is, uh, you know, improving as a result of the tax policy. The tax cuts, $1.5 trillion, is actually giving uh, tax cuts to people all across the board. And there are good provisions all, you know, in all ways. So that's one thing. But there are a areas that I disagree with, like family separation issues. This is against my family values. It, this is against family values. Mm -hmm. I've said it all on the all along the way. So okay. there are issues that I will support him, there are issues that I will disagree with him, and I'll say so in the very strongest okay. terms. Gil, to yeah. what extent is this uh, for you a national uh, election? And let me ask you very, very bluntly, mm -hmm. would you vote to impeach Donald Trump if you got elected to Congress? Well, when I'm out there talking to the people of the 39th District, they want somebody who's going to hold the president accountable. Um, Ed Royce hasn't done that. Uh, young Kim won't do that in Washington. When he was tearing children away from their parents down at the border, uh, she refused to call him out for that. When he was defending Va Vladimir Putin uh, for Russia meddling in our elections, she refused to call him out for that. They want somebody who's going to hold the president accountable, and that's what I'm going to do when I go to Washington. And I, I don't support the impeachment of the president right now. I think what we need to do is to let Robert Mueller finish his investigation and really find out what happened. Um, the unfortunate thing is that all of our intelligence agencies have said <laughs> that Russia meddled in our elections in 2016, but yet we haven't had one investigation in Congress, in either in the House or in the Senate, to look at that. That's why this election is so important. That's why we need a Democratic Congress, and that's why the people of the 39th want change, because they want somebody who's going to look into this to see, to get to the bottom of what really happened. Well, let me ask you, though, on that, you, you said you should let the investigation work. Mm -hmm. There are some Democrats who are already saying right. that they will vote to mm -hmm. uh, to impeach him. Are, are they, do you disagree with them on taking that stance? Yeah, there are some Democrats doing that. I am not one of them. I have always said that we need to let the investigation finish, let Robert Mueller come to his conclusions to find out what happened. Uh, and that's the important thing that needs to happen right now. Okay. And then beyond that is why the Democratic Congress is so important, why this election is so important, is because we need to look into what happened to our elections. Uh, like I said, we haven't had one hearing on any of that, and even though all our intelligence agencies agreed that Russia meddled in our elections. We haven't had one hearing, and that needs to change. Yeah. Young, did you want to say something about that? I think I agree. Uh, I think the Mueller investigation should go on, and I agree that uh, Washington is not always perfect, but you know, look, mm -hmm. 
government is not always perfect. That's why they need some uh, fiscally responsible person mm -hmm. who will, uh, you know, ensure that we we put the house fiscal order in in place first. I, right? I agree, I agree with that. That's why you know that's why I think we need a Democratic Congress right now because what the Republicans did was they created a one the point they added one point five trillion dollars to the deficit. Is that nothing but dysfunction in Washington? Mm -hmm. And uh, the resistance that we've seen, this is totally uncharacteristic of American values. Are you referencing the Kavanaugh hearings? Or? That and many things. Yeah. You know, okay. I, I, again, we just need some adults in the room, You're and right. I think I can be that okay. person. Well, I think I can be that person. Okay. When I'm out talking okay. to people in the district, they're worried. They know this, this tax bill that the Republicans passed mm -hmm. is hurting Californians. But on it average, is helping uh, to no, turn not, the uh, not, economy uh, around. The economy is, is strong. The the economy has been yeah. growing over eight plus years. It's been on an upward trend. It is not. It is it the has. strongest it, it has been. Economy is on the rise. On an and look, we are looking at the lowest well, unemployment rate yeah. in almost Which has 50 been on years. a downward trend for over eight plus years. Unemployment rate is at the lowest and scale. It's 3.6%. We I haven't not, seen this in the last 49 but years. Not, That's almost We not deny that years. it's been going down. The truth is, this tax bill has added $1.5 trillion to the deficit. Republicans have said they're going to go after Social Security and Medicare in order to make up that difference. No, I it's disagree with it, that. It, no, no, that's Social what they've Security said. Social Security and Medicare no. is something that the pay people paid into. Exactly. And we have an obligation to make sure that it's solvent. It's there for the people that are nearing or at retirement. So that you be, are attacking no, me that I'm, I will take away those things, Gil. It is onto you and I I'm never telling, had a conversation. No, no. I will protect the, this is and what the prevent Social said. Security and Medicare. That's that, what Republicans that's said, but I'm a different kind no, of Republican. And that will kind of fight Republican. to preserve and protect when you were Social in the Security Assembly, and you Medicare. You voted along the Republican lines all the time. No, I voted all for what is right and for the people of the 65th Assembly okay. that I represent. You're going to continue to do that. No, in I'm Washington. not. You well, and I'm, I have I'm, not had a conversation, so is, don't put, don't put the words in people's mouths. Add okay. $1.5 trillion to our deficit. But we do, it is also record low on the deficit. So we can talk about the national deficit. It's going to add $11,000 in taxes to citizens. I gather you you like the tax plan. <laughs> you don't. Right. But all right. But let, let's just, let's. I mean, I I I, I so love. I, no, I don't want to continue yeah. on this conversation I, I, because I, I, you know what? It is it is unfair for you to uh, you know criticize me on things that I have not said. The tax bill has actually helped middle class it people because it is it's providing the, the middle class tax cut, which I would like to see make it permanent. Seventy percent no. of the tax cuts went to corporations because of the new right. tax like Wells Fargo, okay. no. which used that money. It didn't give it to no, its look, employees. No, look, look at Amazon. They they're, use they're, that money. No, they're they giving that more. Money they're to imposing buy back minimum tax people their because their they're making the decision on their the own. Richer. It's not the government that <laughs> is, is doing it. This, this is great, and I think we could have the whole show just on the <laughs> economics <laughs> of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the tax. No, because uh, tax this is unfair but, for... But let's, all right. You're right. Let me address well, this well, issue. That is, it is unfair well, for you to take me on this, but, you know, it is really... Are you against... I'm a parent. I'm well, really. So am I. Yeah. Well, so are you against increasing the child tax credit, doubling the standard deduction, which helps people to get more uh, take home pay? I mean, that would have been great. You know, that would have been great. Health savings account but, you know, increasing it is important what, what because hurt the again, people of California is taking away the state and local income tax deduction. I, I will. That's something adding, I would fight to bring back. Well, I know there was so a So you cap just admitted there. this bill. No, you just admitted that It is not perfect. Bill, it is not perfect. It is not it perfect. It is hurting the citizens of California and the citizens. I will fight to. Bring back full okay. salt you just, and folks, we are we are one tax, question and is. I will admitted. make middle class you tax cuts permanent. You just I did. admit it. All right. the citizens of the 39th. No, no, no. I, California. California okay. is I think already I have lost. Right. I think, uh, folks, I, I think I've lost control of this. <laughs> but I mean, I, this this is good. I like this. I like the spirit. But let's let's move on. I think the difference in your economics are are pretty stark. And I, I think yeah. the, uh, the the viewers can see that. So let's why. But you yeah. talked about unfairness, unfairness in ads. There have been ads with showing you with Trump and you know attacking you for taking money from different special interests and all and all that. Um, but let's let's look on the flip side and uh, let's talk a little, uh, Gil, about the uh, uh, sexual uh, uh, harassment allegations that that you went through. There were independent expenditures against you. I think they've stopped 
mm -hmm. doing that at least for now they, they stop because you're uh, you're uh, you're a, a person who alleged the sexual uh, harassment uh, against you you got together and uh, she's stepped back mm -hmm. from what she said but you know this was kind of concurrent with what was going on with the Kavanaugh hearings and you said that uh, when you saw what dr. Ford went through you decided to reach out to your accuser and sit down with her what I'm wondering is did you feel anything for for judge Kavanaugh did I feel anything for judge Kavanaugh yeah, in a way because oh. He, you, in, in some ways, you were both well, being accused of something I think our you said you didn't do. I think our situations are totally different. Um, I had one individual that has since retracted, withdrawn her statement. Uh, I had a, an activist who tried to get us together to bring it down, and I agreed because of what I saw on the Kavanaugh hearings going on that I would sit down with her. And when we sat down, it came that it was a misunderstanding. Um, Judge Kavanaugh has had multiple people that have come out against him back when well, he was he in high school, <laughs> when he was in college, <laughs> and beyond. Uh, I mean, there were multiple. You well, can't deny in, in that the case, there was multiple well, individuals that spoken there, up and said that. Did something. But but there was there was there was no uh, there was no corroboration. There mm -hmm. was at least one believable uh, accuser mm -hmm. for something that had happened. I, I certainly the, his allegation was more serious than yours. His was sexual assault. Yours was sexual harassment. But yours was this year. His was there. I, so I, I was just asking you, and I think your I answer is no, it, no. You didn't feel exactly. like, gee, that, and that's me up there. I think you're taking it too far there, Rick. Right. My, you know, the woman who I spoke with who made that, sure. she never said it was sexual harassment. So it, it was never that. Uh, proposition? I mean, uh, what, I mean, no, I mean, seriously. So the thing she, was, right. look, we worked it out. It was a misunderstanding. She withdrew it. And we've moved on. Okay. Uh, the CLF has lied about this because they know they can't run on the issues. They attack my character. They attack my integrity. Their communications director even said that they don't care that the statements aren't true because okay. that's not what they're concerned right. about. Now you, they you know realize they can't run on some the of issues. what you're saying. I know you say there's no connection, but some of what you're saying could exactly be what Kavanaugh would would be saying. They're attacking me, da da da, and all that. But mm -hmm. okay, that's fine, Kim. I want to uh, uh, Young. I want to ask you um, uh, on on the other side. You know, uh, Republicans have been very quick to defend Kavanaugh. Uh, I never heard you complain about the ads that were running against uh, 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 Mr. Cisneros, again, on an allegation that he was denying. On this issue, I didn't take any, I didn't say anything about anything, not even for Kavanaugh or when his, he was accused. This is not an issue that I was running on. The ads that he's referring to, it's not my ads, right? I always said, but, but one But you man, could say stop the ads. You well, didn't say stop the ads. That is being very naive about how Super PAC is run. You're not <laughs> supposed to have any correspondence or correlation or coordination with anything, right? I've, I didn't make any statement right. about this the only thing I said was for both Kavanaugh or in Mr. Yeah. Cisneros uh, position any woman who wants to come forward and tell their story should be given the opportunity to tell their side of the story Rick, it's simple it's, as it's, that it's just right. more of an it's example not, it's not it's my just more of an example right. of Ms. Ms. Mrs. Kim's right. lack of, of to speak up when things happen well she doesn't speak up against right. Donald Trump when he was pulling kids away from the border she didn't I speak up no, for him no no when, Gil, no Gil, no Gil. you did not yes. you yes. actually denied in a Bloomberg article you said no, we didn't. don't really know what's going on down there do we because you don't when, know because you were not down I there I was down there I was not down there I have been to the border myself I actually went from the San Diego went down on the and I got out in Tijuana to actually see what is actually happening on the border. I have done okay. that, right? I was, down there, I was down there where yes. they were pulling but Since, away since we're on yes. immigration, let's uh, We are definitely, uh, you know, we disagree on this, uh, but I said it very clearly. I am very against clearly family in a separation. Right. That you didn't I am really an immigrant. Uh, I'm a mother. Really folks, I'm a folks, woman. On, I folks, see these I, things. I, it breaks my right, heart. The, and that's what I said. Let's expand. Let's expand. Let's expand the Let's expand the immigration issue a little bit. Yes. You disagree on. I, I'm hearing you ha that you both say you have the same position on separation. Okay. Gil saying you don't, but okay. So on separation, what about no, more I broadly? I am very clearly let, against right. family separation. Well, let me ask you yeah. on the issue of immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me ask you specifically: What do you think of sanctuary cities, and where do you think you do differ from from Gil's approach on immigration? It's, uh, sanctuary cities is all about uh, law and order. 
we cannot tie the hands of our law enforcement officers to be able to cooperate and work closely with our federal agents, right? Uh, so that's why I'm clearly against sanctuary cities. On the immigration issues, let me tell you, I am an immigrant. I came through the legal system to come yeah. here, uh, and I, only, I want to I'm talk only about. I'm jumping because we're running low, yes. uh, low on time. Where, where do you disagree with uh, uh, sanctuary do you think cities? You, uh, on sa am, uh, with yeah. Bill on on, yeah. on what? topics of immigration and you say you differ with him? Well, I want the fair process. I don't think we differ a little bit, you know, too much on this one because we both are against family separation. And I'm against President's policy of uh, ending the family migration because that's okay. how my family Good. came over so, here. So, Gail, just quickly, yeah. where do you think you differ uh, other than that, other than what you say her separation well, policy is? she says she supports DREAMers and our, and, our, and our DACA students, but yet when she was in the state legislature, she voted against legislation that would support resource centers for DREAMers in our colleges and universities. During the primary, she said, you know, she talked about her, her family immigrated to this country and said others were just coming looking for a handout. Um, th that's how, that's her view. That's of, not that, how I said it. That's no, how you no. said it. No, my, Naya yeah, clearly talks about my family background, how we came here to realize the American dream. The economic that's your, opportunities. That's in your new one. That's in your new one. The because opportunities. Because you changed your commercial no, because that is you not knew because of that. what no, you no. said in the primary was not resonating with the you voters of the 39. You are putting words in people's mouth I'm not and that putting is words not it. It's, I, it's I in your own commercial. So and you can still find it on where YouTube. everybody yeah. wants to come here to realize the American dream. The opportunities that you and I talk about, mm -hmm. we want that to be then fair up, and available up, for it. I've been doing and, that, and yes. So let right. me talk about immigration, which I always speak talk up about immigration policy. Who's who's trying right. to end, who's let's trying to end the policy. If you will stop and let me talk, well, I will tell you what my immigration okay. policy well, is. Well, I want a fair system that is fair. We need to be compassionate. So I've been talking about fixing DACA. I you interrupted me. Now we're getting Getting close to, uh, we hardly even touch on issues. <laughs> so, in our open mic segment, maybe we can get into yeah. a, other, a couple other things, especially health care, which mm -hmm. I know some of you both care about. Do you want to do closing statements, or should we do one more topic and just uh, run it out here? Uh, well, what, are what, we what do you prefer? Time. <laughs> well, yeah. Let, let's just it's do a topic. Topics, yeah. Let's yeah. do topics. Yeah, I like that. I like the way you guys. Yeah. So let's talk about health care. We've got a little over two minutes to, to hit health care. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's your turn, uh, Young. Uh, uh, again, where, uh, where do you think you differ when it comes to Affordable Care Act and uh, 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 you know, other um, uh, universal health care and things? Is there a difference between you and Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know? There is a clear difference. First of all, health care costs are rising, right? So we need to take care of this by providing more market-based competition so we can lower the cost. We need to allow individuals to be able to purchase their ins uh, insurance plans that is across the, uh, across the state lines. We need to be able to provide more generic brands because I personally experienced it. When I went recently to a pharmacy to buy a purchase, uh, to buy a drug, I mean, <laughs> medicine that is, um, if it, because generic brands are not available, I had to pay 10 times more. That is not fair. You know what, by my opponent and the Democrats wants to now pursue a government run healthcare program, Medicare for all. This is already rating into $800 billion to, you know, to implement the Obamacare. We're already bankrupting the system as is, and as we know it, if we go down that route, we need to make sure that the competition is there, lower the cost. Like I, I said, we need to talk about the last minute. reform Just quick yes and, and everything. Yes or no, would you uh, vote to uh, repeal uh, Obamacare? No, any discussion regarding Obamacare or reforming our healthcare system, we need to make sure that Two critical okay. points are there. Right. Ensure, protect the pre-existing condition and also allow children to be insured under their parents' program through the age okay. of 26. Yo, you get the last 50 yeah. seconds. Rick, I, I know about health care. Right? My parents, my mother went 16 years without health insurance when my dad lost his job. My dad used to have to go down to Tijuana to buy his prescription drugs because they were too expensive. I've talked to individuals in the district, one mother in particular who has an eight-year-old daughter who's suffering from a heart defect and has already had multiple surgeries and is going to have to have more. And she's worried about Republicans taking away the protection for her daughter's pre-existing pre conditions. Uh, if, if Young supports these things, then speak up, raise your voice. There's a lawsuit right now 
the Republicans are trying to say that protecting public, uh, protecting pre-existing conditions is unconstitutional. Uh, speak up against that if you're for that. Okay. The truth is, you speak, you've taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from insurance okay. companies and from big pharma, and so that's who you're going to represent in Washington. Okay. I'm going to represent the voters of the 39th. All right, and Gil, Gil gets the last word on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for a spirited discussion. I think I have never lost control of a, of a show like I have on this one, but, but you were terrific, and I right. think it was valuable exchanges. Well, so our time's much. up. Thanks again to the candidates, Gil Cisneros and Young Kim. You can watch this show and past shows at pbsocal.org or rickreef.com. You can also catch our shows and our post-show open mic chatter on YouTube and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching Inside OC. With the midterm elections just days away, watch the competition